uh, property of all souls because all souls are like sons and daughters of the supreme soul so just like we naturally inherit the property of our father we can naturally get this knowledge that leads to spiritual liberation because Krishna wants us to be uh, engaged in his devotional service and have that freedom he wants us to be free from the illusion free from the material suffering free from the suffering of separation from him see everybody in this material world is suffering because of separation from God God is the actual beloved the actual perfect person that we're looking for everybody's looking for love and they're looking for it in human beings which is the wrong place to look huh? human beings you know they're once you have a relationship with God then you can have a normal relationship with other human beings until then you're always going to be projecting all of this unrealistic stuff <laughs> on human beings that they can never fulfill you know I mean we're all spirit souls and so we're all ultimately spiritual and pure but in this material world we become conditioned by material consciousness and we pick up so many bad qualities from bad association and wrong ideas, illusion, uh, imperfect senses, cheating propensity, I mean all of these things, we're all very familiar with all these defects. So instead of wasting our time being disappointed again and again trying to love people uh, in an inappropriate way, if we love God that will give us the satisfaction, the emotional uh, pleasure that we're looking for. Krishna means the source of all pleasure. Huh? Krishna is so wonderful and so beautiful and his love is so satisfying that once you try it, once you taste it, you won't ever want to go back to the same old unsatisfying, frustrating, um, imperfect suffering of you know trying to love people who just don't deserve it. You know. I mean, we can love people as our friends and as our God brothers and like that. And we can have nice association with other devotees. But if this is based on the principle that we don't expect them to be perfect. Huh? We expect them to be just as they are. And we're not trying to project anything on them that's unrealistic. Huh? But the Lord, our relationship with the Lord is perfect. Because he reciprocates exactly according to our affection. As they surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. I respond. I reciprocate according to the flavor of their love. So there's five basic ways that we can love God. Neutral adoration, huh? which means like awe and veneration. Servitorship, which means that we actively serve God in some way. Friendship, where we become like an intimate friend, almost like an equal. Parenthood, where we actually become one of the superiors of the Lord. And conjugal love, where we become his lover. Uh, these five flavors or rasas are the uh, main flavors of love of God. And within those, we can develop some special a uh, unique relationship with the Lord which is perfect just for us huh? and you can become completely emotionally and spiritually satisfied by this relationship this is our experience yes it takes a while it's not going to happen overnight uh, only a person who has some acquaintance or some experience of devotional service in a previous life can actually engage in this devotional service in this lifetime. It may be that in a previous life you had some contact with devotees. But once you actually make up your mind, okay, I'm tired of this material world. I'm going to learn how to love God. I'm going to get out of this material world. Once you really make up your mind to do that, Krishna will help you. And Krishna will make it easy for you to actually realize himself and your real self. Huh? You all, all of us, 
in this material world have a spiritual identity which is eternal and perfect. Uh -huh. And the uh, pastimes that we have with Krishna, the relationship we have with Krishna, or one of his expansions, he has an unlimited number of expansions, they're all different. Huh? One of them is just perfect for each one of us. So we have to find out what that is. There's a lot to learn, and it takes a while. And there's a lot of purification, and there's a lot of tests involved. But what's the alternative? Same old thing. Huh? Knocking around this old material world, birth, old age, disease, death. Oh, great. <laughs> there's nothing really else to do. This is the real purpose of human life. Huh? And if we pursue it, then we can be happy. If we fail to pursue this ultimate purpose, then simply the same old story is going to repeat over and over and over again. And we're all sick and tired of that. Huh? That's why you're watching this presentation. That's why you're participating in this satsang, is because you're tired of this material life. You want something better. You know there's something better. Huh? Now, how do you reach it? How do you realize it? That's the subject of all of our discussions. So we uh, request you to join us, become a member of our school, become a student, study this ancient science, the esoteric teaching. And it is a science because if you follow the methods, you get repeatable results. The results are subjective, they're not objective. Uh -huh because we're dealing with consciousness. And consciousness is subjective. Consciousness is not a thing, but it is a quality of the soul. It is the chief symptom of the soul. Consciousness, energy, will, intelligence, desire, emotion. These are all qualities or uh, symptoms of the soul. So uh, they're, they're not things that we can isolate and, you know, uh, like a substance. But they're qualities of the soul and they're abstractions. They're unmanifest. They're subjective only. And when we uh, experience life from the platform of consciousness, then these things become more important, much more important than the physical body or the possessions or the other external things of life. And this is real human life. Huh? All the great personalities in the past were like that. We should also become like that. Not that we should be uh, degraded by this material existence, but we should rediscover our actual spiritual existence. And that will make us happy. Huh? That's Krishna consciousness. So, I've been talking for a long time, I think. Huh? How long? It's one. Mm. It's not that much. Oh, really? I should talk more, huh? <laughs> no. Uh, well, ask for questions. Okay. There is a question from Mother Indira. How must we explain population explosion when we talk to people who have no idea of Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead? I mean in the context of soul being indestructible, I understand the soul can be any living entity? Well, every living entity is a soul. Where there's life, there's spirit. Uh -huh. So, those living entities exist eternally, and they take birth in different forms of life according to their karma. So, it's not that this material world is all there is, or that this planet is all there is. Huh? But these souls can come, unlimited numbers of souls can come from other universes, other planets, I mean, even the spiritual world. Uh, just like there's so many living entities going back to the spiritual world at every moment. So also, there's so many falling down from the spiritual world at every moment, huh? according to their will. If they want to be separate from Krishna, then they can come to this material world. So population explosion actually means that the material world is not being managed properly. You see, population explosion would not be a problem if we had proper management. 
The problem is that the resources like uh, the soil and the uh, water and things like this are being contaminated, they're being polluted, they're not being regenerated by proper sustainable uh, farming pra practices. In the Vedic society, uh, it's described there were maybe two or three times the number of people that are on the earth now. How were they all fed? How were they all clothed? How were they all housed? And uh, Where did their necessities come from? Uh, well, do we think that God is an irresponsible creator, that he doesn't supply the necessities for uh, the people that he creates? Uh, that's nonsense. The Malthusian view is, is completely wrong. It's completely material and, and irresponsible. It means that we do 